Hi, this is Michael King, and this is Time Value Money Part 1, where we talk about what is time value money and compounding. So we're going to look at different ways of thinking about time value money, and we're going to take a moment and compare simple versus compound interest. So Chapter 5 from Booth, Clear, and Rikita has, is broken down into these sections. We're going to cover sections 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3, in this section. So finance is really about money and what kind of return you can make um, and for many people they're uncomfortable because it's quantitative and there's a lot of calculations. You're going to see time value money come back again and again as you work your way through your finance course and your financial career. It's really a vital tool in your toolkit. You're going to see it used for Things such as capital budgeting, which is how a company decides where to invest its money um, in the forms of using net present value and internal rate of return. You're going to see it used for pricing both loans and mortgages, for valuing bonds, stocks, and other financial securities, including derivatives, and when a company goes to raise money, and many other applications. I know it's a challenging topic. Uh, myself, I've learned it, I've forgotten it, I've had to relearn it. You, uh, you know, you make mistakes if you're not paying attention. It's very easy to put the wrong, en wrong entry in and you just have to keep repeating it in order to master it. So what I typically do, because I'm a visual learner, is I like to draw out cash um, timelines that will show the cash flows, such as this. So here we can see an investment of $100 made today which grows for four periods and we or, could be four years, could be four months, could be four quarters. We're just going to call them periods and we want to know what the future value is. In Excel, I would typically put together a table like this one where you can see, okay, I invest $100 and let's assume the rate of interest is 5%. At the end of the first year, it's going to be worth $105. That $105 will then be reinvested at 5%. It will earn slightly more interest, $5 and a quarter, such that at the end of two years, it'll be worth a 110 and a quarter. This kind of table is useful for visualizing uh, what is happening with your money. So time value money is often referred to uh, by the expression, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. Why is that? Well, the answer is that there's an opportunity cost. If you wait and uh, invest your dollar, it can actually grow at some rate of interest and be worth more in the future. Rather than spending it today, you can wait and you'll have more in the future. In economics, we talk about consumption or uh, people delaying consumption. There's got to be some benefit to holding off on making a purchase and making it in the future, which is called deferring consumption. So the kind of questions that you hear spoken about with time value money are, you know, would you rather receive $500 today or $500 after one month? Well, if you receive $500 today, you can invest it and it might be worth more than $500 after one month. If you give me $10 today and I repay you $15 in a year, would you take this offer? Yeah, most people probably would. That is a 5% annualized rate of return. You've earned $5 by delaying consumption for one year, or you could say the opportunity cost was $5. So the formula that we're going to use for doing these calculations is this one, where on the left you have the future value. PV is the present value or the value that you invest today. K is some periodic interest rate, and N is the number of periods. Now notice that I don't use years, I say periods, because we're often going to see that the periods could be a month, a quarter, a year, or something else. So given the present value, we can calculate the future value, but we can also reverse this formula, obviously. Knowing what the future value is, we can back out what the present value will be. And we're going to see that this is a, a, a standard calculation using a financial calculator and it's quite straightforward to you to calculate in Excel. Now, the interest rate that is used in 
uh, in this formula is going to be denoted using the letter K in this, this textbook. Um, you, you can pick up a different textbook and they may use the letter I for interest rate, R for rate, or something else. Just keep in mind that this is a rate of interest over some period. Now, you may also hear, hear about this interest rate being called a discount rate when it comes to calculating the present value. The discount rate is the rate that finds the value in today's dollars or the present value. With many time value money calculations, we are going to assume that the interest is reinvested and we're going to call this compounding. But we need to take a stop, um, stop for a moment and talk about what we mean by compound interest by comparing it with something called simple interest. Okay, so there's two types of interest. Simple interest is where interest is paid or received only on your initial investment, which is called the principal. So for example, if the principal is $100 and I invest it for three years at 5% simple interest, each year I'm going to receive only $5, or 5% times 100. At the end of three years, I will therefore have $115. I will have my principal of $100, and I will have three simple interest payments of $5 that I've received. This is not true with compound interest. With compound interest, you assume that after receiving the interest, you get to reinvest it, and that's called accrued interest. So if you have $100 for three years invested at 5% compounded annually, you would, at the end of three years, have $115.76. Why is the amount larger? Well, the 76 cents represents the interest on the interest that you received, or the, the compounded amount. So just taking a look again at the simple interest example, remember that simple interest ignores compounding. So you can see here, you receive $5 of interest on your $100. It doesn't matter that your, peer, your amount of money is growing, you're only going to get 5% of the original amount. At the end of this, you'll have $115. Okay, and by the way, no one uses simple interest. What we all use is we use compound interest, which assumes that you are going to reinvest any interest that you earned. Okay? Obviously, this means that you can't spend the money at the end of the first year. You have to reinvest it. Otherwise, it would not be around to compound. So this formula is the one that we're going to use. It includes compounding. Notice that future value is the value in the future at some point. Present value is the value in today's dollars, and it's denoted present value zero just to make it clear that it's today. One plus the interest rate is where k is the interest rate, and that is raised to the power or the exponent of n, which is the number of periods. So for example, if I invest $100 at 5% compounded annually over three years, what is my future value at the end of year three? Plug again into your formula. Yes, you see that you get $115.76. Let's take a look at what a chart would look like for how your, your money will grow through compounding. Notice that simple interest is the flat line where you're earning only a fixed amount every period and your money is therefore growing very slowly. With compound interest, it grows exponentially, which is this blue area which grows and rises rapidly to the right. That is because you're earning interest on interest, and as the years go by, you're going to have more at the end. So as Albert Einstein said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it, and he who doesn't pays it and it is the strongest force in the universe.